just wanted to, um, to start off and introduce you guys myself to you a little bit about me. Um, yeah, my name is Dan Gritsko, and I am a senior in computer science in the first slide. And I guess the last slide. In a second. Being, uh, being a computer science major, um, it means that you think these things are hilarious. And if you don't like understand the humor in these these things here, it's okay. It means you're not a nerd, so don't worry about it. Um, but yeah, I am a computer science major. Um, I'm the oldest of five kids. You can go to the next slide. That's my family: my dad, mom, me, Hannah, Caleb, Esther, and Rachel. And they're actually here tonight. Um, you guys can wave. Um, yeah. So we, we took this picture a couple years ago. And we all. Uh, dressed in matching clothes and we went out to this field near our house and had a friend of ours um, take, a, take a picture. And it takes a really long time to coordinate seven people to be in the air at once. Um, and it also took a while because we were all really self-conscious. Whenever our car drove by, we'd stop jumping. <laughs> and we'd pretend that we just all decided to wear matching clothes and hang out in a field. Um, but yeah, so I have another picture. Don't go there just yet. But um, it's also a couple years ago I'm about to show you. Um, we were taking Christmas pictures, and it also seemed to take an eternity. Um, when we finally got done, somebody had brought a package of fake mustaches. So we put them on, and the next picture is the result of that. So, they were all done. And you go, I, uh, I took the liberty of uh, grading how well each person's mustache works for them. You can go to the next slide. Yeah. I think the funniest part about this is the mustache works the best for my mom. <laughs> she pulls it off really nicely. Um, but yeah, so that's my family, um, and I love them a lot. And if it weren't for them, I wouldn't be up here in front of you tonight. And I mean that um, pretty literally. Um, I got involved in Crusade. Well, yeah, and that's... More in the sense of me being involved in Crusade. Uh, That'll be on YouTube. I transferred to JMU um, two years ago as a junior, and before I transferred in, um, I, I really didn't know anybody here. My mom, um, along, along with my dad, had been involved in Crusade when they were in college. My mom got the email address of Rob Adams, who a lot of you guys probably know is a senior who graduated from here last year. She gave me this guy's email address um, and started bugging me to, to email him. And, try and, uh, I guess, get him to introduce me to people or something like that, which is the last thing I wanted to do. To email some guy I didn't know and be like, hi, I don't have any friends, can I have some of yours? <laughs> but, um, so she kept bugging me about it, so I emailed Rob, and he, he was cool about it, he invited me to come up and hang out at JMU, so I did. Uh, he took me over to the Rock House, I hung out with, um, with some of his friends. He invited me to go um, on Men's Street, which I ended up doing as well. And so this is, this is all before I transferred here, and so I got to, to meet a lot of people um, who were great um, Christian guys who were involved in Crusades. When I finally did come, um, we went Crusade, I been involved in a Bible study, um, Kent's Bible study, actually. Um, he's been my Bible study for the past two years. And just got more involved, and And, yeah, so basically, um, the past few years, I've been challenged, um, stretched, grown in my faith, and given more opportunities um, being involved in the Christian community here at JMU than I have basically the whole rest of my life. Um, and the importance of Christian community is kind of what I, um, it's what I want to talk to you guys about tonight. So if you um, could pray with me really quick, and then we'll jump in. Uh, Jesus, I thank you um, for the opportunity to speak tonight. Pray that you would um, calm my nerves and speak through me, God. Um, just give me humility and, yeah, just allow um, what I say tonight um, to be relevant and helpful and glorifying to you. In your name I pray, amen. Uh, if you have your Bibles, you can open up to Romans chapter 12. And look at that passage there to start with. Um, yeah, so I'm going to be talking about um, the importance of community for um, our growth as Christians. And I'm going to start off pretty generally and then close with uh, a challenge. Um, so Romans chapter 12, um, verses 4 and 5, Paul is writing here. It says, Just as each of us has one body with many members... And these members do not all have the same function. So in Christ, we who are many form one body, and each member um, belongs to all the others. Um, so basically in this passage, Paul is comparing um, the body of Christ to the physical bodies 
um, that each one of us has. And body of Christ program, um, that most of you are all familiar with, but if you aren't, it just refers to a community that's formed by all Christians, meaning everyone who has a, a personal relationship with Jesus. So Paul writes um, that each of us has one body um, with many members, and this is a, as a parallel for how the, the body of Christ is structured. Um, our bodies obviously have many different parts, you know, ears, ribs, teeth, etc. And these parts all have different functions um, that work in harmony, more useful. And using Paul's comparison here, each of us has um, each of us that has a personal relationship with Jesus represents a different body part in the body of Christ. And even though we're part of the same body by virtue of the fact that we each love Jesus and have a personal relationship with him, we each have different roles um, within that body. So like I said, this is probably not um, a new idea to most of you guys, and it's pretty obvious, I guess, if you, um, that we all have different roles within um, the body of Christ to work si alongside other members um, in order to glorify Jesus. Um, yeah, and it, I mean, it kind of makes sense, like a body made up of all eyelashes or something. Wouldn't be wouldn't be very useful. You wouldn't get you wouldn't get much done. Um, so if we all function the same way within uh, within the body of Christ, um, we would fail to accomplish a lot of the things that we that we are able to by each of us having different roles. And I mean, an example of this would be like the meeting tonight. It takes a lot of different people um, doing a lot of different things for everything to to come together and work smoothly for for a great result. But um, it's not only necessary to realize that we work alongside others in the body of Christ to accomplish um, God's work. Um, but we also need to realize that it's through um, being a part of the body of Christ that we grow in our own faith. Um, so the, the idea that Paul's talking about here, that we need to, I guess, rely on others. Um, and like as, as Paul says, each, um, each member in the body of Christ belongs to all the others. I feel like it's kind of in, in contention with... Um, with a, with a view that's like idealized and emphasized by the culture that we live in. Um, like our, our culture emphasizes individualism um, as, a, as a really high value. Like if you look at the way things are, are advertised to you, there's, a, there's the iPod, which, which is great, I'm sure, but it's, it's all about you know, playing whatever song you want to listen to. And things are all about, um, I guess, having things cater to your, your individual needs. So you have this little individual bubble that, um, that's built up. Um, it's all about you. 